God's funeral. Service was just about to start when the man turned up. I can't fucking say it. But, but, the man spoke to mum at the entrance of the chapel and I said to you, who's that brother? You said, you said, never seen him before. Man had thick grey hair, so grey it was almost white. It was all sort of swept back, tidy. He was so fucking pale. He didn't look ill or anything, just like a ghost. I said, it's, it's Mr. Ghost. We laughed. The priest shot us a look, remember? Man gave mum a hug. You know, I think that was the first time I'd ever seen mum a hug before. By another man, I mean. Dad never hugged her. Dad never even kissed her. Remember dad kissing her? Man sat in the back row. Mum came and sat between us in the front. She said, it's an old friend of your dad's, one of his teachers. You heard about your dad's accident? He came to pay his respects. I kept looking back at the man. You know the one thing I remember the most? He was the only one crying. Apart from me, guys. I was crying, and the man was crying. Mum didn't. Not once. Nor did you. Not one fucking tear. After the funeral, this man, he came up and spoke to us, you and me. We were standing a little way off from the grave. Mum was talking to some of her workmates. Man said he used to teach dad English. He said dad was very good at writing. The man said he had some poems written by dad from when he was a boy. He asked us if we wanted to see them. I said, yes please, you didn't say anything. He looked at you and he said, why don't you and your brother come round next Friday afternoon? He told you his address a few times. He didn't write it down or anything, he just said it over and over again until you could say it back to him. And the man said, best not mention this to your mum. Memories of your dad's childhood, they might upset her. We wouldn't want that, no, wouldn't we, boys? We both said we didn't want that. And then, then he took you to one side and he put something in your hand. He said, treat yourself and your brother. It was money. I didn't see how much. Later on, you bought me. What was it, Steve? You remember? Chocolate. All that week he kept saying to me that he can't wait to see Dad's poems, eh, bro? On, on, you wouldn't let me forget it for a second. Three days for Dad's poems, two days for Dad's poems, tomorrow you get to see Dad's poems, by the time the day arrived, fuck! I was almost hysterical, wasn't I, bro? I was practically begging you to take me to see the man. But you played it so cool. <laughs> oh, you were busy. You had so much to do, but in the end... You relented. We walked the whole way there. We took all the back streets. It was as if you didn't want anyone to see us. 
man lived at a big house in the corner, there was a big tree in the front garden. I was so fucking excited, I felt sick with it. I kept tugging at your hand, you kept telling me to calm down. You rang the doorbell, the man opened the door. He's wearing a dressing gown. I whispered, has he just got up? The man took us into the front room and the curtains were closed. And I asked him why, and he said, I have a very bad headache, they're called migraines. And I said, mum gets them all the time. And the man said, would you like something to drink? We did. He got us some Cokes. We sat down and we spoke about dad. And said, your dad was destined to be a great poet. And you said, but he wasn't. And the man said, not yet he wasn't. He died so young, only 35. <laughs> we both giggled at the idea of 35 being young. <laughs> man said, we'd like to see your dad's poems now. And I said, yeah. And the man stood up, and I stood up, but you didn't. I said, come on, bruv, that's poems. The man said, I don't think your brother's interested. Is that right, Stephen? And you nodded. I remember feeling so angry. I felt like I wanted to hit you. I said to the man, forget him. The man held my hand and we went upstairs. When I came back down, I was crying so much, I couldn't catch my breath. The man said, all got a bit too emotional for your brother, I think. He got us some more cokes. You were sitting on the sofa. You wouldn't look at me. I wanted you to look at me. But you wouldn't fucking look. You just kept your eyes fixed. Straight ahead. I said I wanted to go. You said we wouldn't until I calmed down. And I knew. If I wanted to get home, I'd have to stop the tears somehow. So I drank my coke and I thought of other things. I thought of Dad. The way he used to carry me on his shoulders. After a while, I managed to stop the tears somehow. I tried my face on my t-shirt, and when I was totally calm, he said, Okay, let's go. Mum will be wondering where we've got to. We all stood up. The man showed us to the door, and then a thought occurred to him. And he said, Oh, Stephen. And he put money in your hand, just like the cemetery. Only this time, I could see how much. And this time, it wasn't pocket money, it was notes. It was a lot of money, and you put it into your back pocket. The 
the way back again we walked, he said, we mustn't mention this to mum. This will upset mum, and we don't want to upset mum, do we? You bought me something on the way back. Chocolate. We got home and said, Do you want to see Dad's poem that the man gave me? You said you did. And I took a blank piece of paper out of my back pocket. I remember it was damp. It was sweat. He sat on the edge of your bed and you opened it. You studied it as if you were reading something, only you weren't reading something, were you, Stephen? You weren't reading anything because the paper was blank. <laughs>